Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over to Chronix with Manish Sinha. He's going to talk today about smart network interface cards. Manish, what's changing in the network interface cards? Well, these things have been around for years. So that's a very good question, and that question a lot of, uh, a lot of us are trying to solve. First of all, what is the problem? Why is this question arising? Uh, the problem is that network interface card has been there for years, and they are doing a very good job. But there are two inherent problems with the software-based solution. The first problem is that if you go to any hyperscalers, how do they monetize? They monetize with CPU cycles. What is the traditional monetization time frame? Maybe five years, six years? There could be ways to do it better, and that's where was initial impetus was, how do you make in a way that you get more monetization out of CPU, so that's number one. Number two is, there is an inherent, uh, you know, inherent dilemma whether the solution should be software or hardware or a mix of it. Now, initially, it has been a software solution, and we all know software solutions uh, could be their performance could be enhanced dramatically if you go, if you couple that with some hardware elements to it, like maybe fixed function. You offload it on a data plane. You accelerate some of these, you know, software functions uh, more. More real term would or more correct term will be network acceleration, network function acceleration. So these accelerator cards are a result of these two problems, how we solve these two problems. And that's where the concept of network accelerator cards, and in data center we call it as intelligent NIC or smart NICs have, have come from. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. Manish, what are we looking at here? So this diagram that I've drawn actually ties back to the question that you asked before, right? What is smart NIC, what is changing, and how does smart NIC or a network accelerator helps? And I've tried to address this with exactly how generally smart NICs are getting positioned. I mean, what is their main job to free up the CPU cycles? So as you said, traditional NIC has been there for years, and in a traditional scenario, in a traditional card, you have, for instance, I have abstracted it in three higher buckets of functions, compute, networks, and storage, compute, storage, and networking. So all these three would use CPU cycles for all the processing that happens, even data transfer, data manipulation. You name it, and they have to consume CPU cycles. So this is a traditional scenario, and see what happens on a smart NIC. On a smart NIC, you have got functions, which is like storage, compute, and networking functions, and you can have different kind of workloads. These get offloaded on an accelerator cards, which have hardware engines for offload and acceleration. And that's one of the big changes that's going on right now, right? Because in the past, we assigned a central CPU or multiple CPUs. Now what's happening is there are very targeted accelerators that are going into these devices and the architectures, because that's really the way you get your performance improvements. A absolutely, and that's a very good way of asking question because these targeted accelerators are where the main crux of the problem is. How, how do you target an accelerator? And more, and this, this problem is a little bit bigger because what Hardware would you need to target this accelerator is also a, problem, also a big question because every workload is different and one size fits all accelerators doesn't work. So in a sense for, for the matter, if you look at this, there are, you have removed the CPU, you have removed the cores, you have lessened the number of cores and you have done a lot of hardware accelerations on the smart NIC. Now this could be done on a multi-core in which you have, you have really fixed function acceleration, right? If you have a security engine, whatever security engines are in multi-core would only be accelerated, right? So while that may be good for many workloads, that may not be good for a lot of workloads as well. And that's where not only the hardware providers, but the customers are also trying to figure out for their particular workload, okay, they have with it. Should they go for a multi-core SOC solution? Should they go for a FPGA solution, or should we go? Should they go for which we call it as an FPGA augmented solution, 
In general term, it is also called hybrid solution, which is a mix of you know both the worlds. What's the metric that they're working with? Is it performance per watt? Is it uh, throughput? What's what are you using? So that's a that's a that's a good question again. And the metric is like is is not one size fits all. If I if I have to put one metric to it, then I would say that how much performance improvements are they getting up after freeing up the CPU cycles, right? I mean that that to me, how much CPU cycles are they freeing, and what is the performance improvements they are getting? So those are the two metrics. It all boils down to how well they can monetize what is existing. One metric that we have seen, and uh, you know it's very implicit, but it doesn't come out very much often, is how does your smart NIC fit in the ecosystem, right? Because there is a maintainability of drivers that has to go for years, right? So that's also has to, so a smart NIC cannot come out of the cloud and say, okay, it will work. It's not going to be, whatever it, because if they have to do with existing server deployments, if I look at hyperscalers, right? So how good they fit into the whole ecosystem is also a very important metric because support element is definitely big here, particularly for the drivers. And that ecosystem now has a lot more data that's moving through it than ever before too, right? So now you have to really think about, okay, do I do this in software? Do I do it with multiple cores? Or do I really go for throughput? Indeed, indeed. So exactly. And that data movement is is kind of creating a lot of problems and opportunities as well, right? Uh, the opportunities segment is more important because now all the guys who want to do something like, uh, who have a lot of data that is passing through their pipe, wants to own the skill set to develop this solution. They don't want to kind of outsource it. Of course, they want to use the ecosystem as best as they can. But again, they want to have, they want to have a skill whether for a particular workload, uh, they could address through through their own engineers or you know or their or their employees and stuff and similar for other workloads as well they they try to do the same so that is one thing that is coming coming together also very well and uh, you know it is the 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 challenge that I see here is that uh, going to the previous previous uh, comment about the ecosystem is that they will have to maintain it right so suppose they have used a vendor before and now they want to either use another vendor or they want to increase the skill set uh, internally then they have to do a backward compatibility backward support to that so I think that's a challenge but then the, again there's an opportunity there how much is this world changing how much programmability do you need to build into this actually that is that ties back to the previous question good that you asked it because the programmability element is very important and uh, if you look at you know the era era of software and all, that's what actually empowered individual programmers to come uh, come main, mainstream. Uh, it's very similar thing is happening and is going to happen in this in this uh, in in the case of smart NIC or accelerator cards, because uh, you can develop the skill set only by doing programmer programming, right? That's the idea. That's the. I mean, you have to try. You have to get your feet wet. You have to really get deep into that. And programmability is a big, big element in that. I think I would consider that, that is actually number one factor. When most people think about a, a network interface card, they really don't pay much attention to those. It's typically one piece of a, a much more complex system. But what's happening now is everything, every piece of this can now be a bottleneck and every piece has to be optimized. That's different than what we used to do in the past, right? Absolutely. And, and one way to look at it is Look at it. Look itself. What network interface card is actually doing, right? Because previously, network interface card will have you know specific functions and and drivers and all. Now, network interface card is a little bit different. That a new version of network interface card will have m much many network functions that were completely non-existent before. There so, is a lot of functions on. There is a lot of capabilities that these network interface cards themselves are giving. And a lot of these capabilities have to be used well, and that's where, where SmartNIC comes in. And a lot of these capabilities have to be complemented as well, and new capabilities have to be added, which are not on the SmartNIC, uh, which are not on the general NIC. So that's where, you know, uh, this is getting a lot of footprint. How does security fit into this? And is a SmartNIC with hardware more uh, secure than a software solution? Well, I mean, uh, traditionally, and uh, you know, in terms of uh, solution-wise, hardware solution is definitely more secure. It has been more secure, less prone to a lot of attacks and hacks and all. 
So yes, uh, I would I would uh, I would go towards that a hardware solution is much more secure. Um, software guys are also doing very good job of trying to make the solution secure. I mean, don't get me wrong there. Uh, security is a very big element of you name it, NIC. I mean, general, I would say network, right? It's a very important element of network. Uh, security was a critical element on on a NIC solution as well, uh, let alone be smart NIC. Smart NIC is adding a lot more capabilities to the NIC or to the, uh, you know, to the actual accelerators. And therefore, the security, you need to have very dedicated security engines, uh, you know, and it's, it's getting enhanced with new security algorithms uh, that is being implemented for this kind of, uh, this kind of workloads. So to sum all this up, really what you're looking at here is adding some granularity and some intelligence into the NIC, which never really had it before, right? Absolutely, and one, one thing there to mention is that the work, it is also very workload specific. So those granularity and those intelligence are not directly translating from one to other. It has to be kind of think through, and it is very much how your consumers consume data and how you are aiding them and at the same time how you are monetizing yourself in the best possible manner. Manish Sinha, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much.